Happy would-be derby day, my friends. It's not quite five o'clock here, but that's because it's derby day and we never start drinking at five on derby day. One thing that the Kentucky Derby does is it's got something for everyone. It brings all Kentuckians together, it brings all horse racing fans together, and it brings everyone together who just likes to have a good time. Hunter S. Thompson in 1970, in his inaugural gonzo journalistic piece, said that the Kentucky Derby was decadent and depraved. It is also lavish and lowbrow. It is elegant and it is excessive. It is high society and low sobriety. And today we are going to make the quintessential derby cocktail, the mint julep. Now the mint julep is simple and it doesn't need a lot in it, but it does need a little bit of love. Thousands and thousands of juleps are made every single year on the Derby. And now, unfortunately, tons and tons of fresh mint is just stuck without homes because the Derby has been pushed off into the fall this year. Now, normally the Derby is held the first Saturday in May, unless that Saturday is the first and then it's the second Saturday in May. And the reason why it's been moved this year, obviously because of COVID, because we can't have all those people hanging around getting drunk and sloppy all over each other, but it's also because all of the qualifying races for the horses didn't happen. So we're hoping that the Kentucky Derby makes its unfettered streak of never taking a break. The Belmont and the Preakness, the other two legs of the Triple Crown have taken breaks during the Great Depression and at other periods in history but the Derby has always run strong. And I think that that's a testament to us Kentuckians and how strong-willed we are. We love a couple things quite a bit, our horse racing and our bourbon. So let's cut the chit chat and let's get down to making that drink. So the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby is now Woodford Reserve. And they actually do come out with this awesome commemorative bottle every single year. This is from 2014, no, 20, yeah, 2014. So this is six years old, this is the 140th. But I didn't wanna crack it open. And since Maker so well fits my Siasaka outfit, we are going to do a Maker's Mark mint julep today. Now you can make a mint julep with whatever bourbon you have at home. You can do the 46 for Maker's. You can use the cask strength if you want. Just make sure that you know, you measure down a little bit. This is a marathon day. Even though the Derby itself is a sprint to the finish, the Derby day is a marathon for us all. So let's make sure to pace ourselves. I'm gonna be using the traditional maker's mark, the 45% alcohol, 90 proof, the OG, and we dressed him up today. Actually, no, it's a lady, I'm sorry. We dressed her up today because she's our favorite redhead, Kentucky's favorite redhead. Maker's Mark. So we're gonna be using two and a half ounces of Maker's Mark to start us off with. So make sure that you have a nice cup. The cup is so important with the mint jewel because you want something that makes sure it stays nice and cold. I have this lovely Maker's Mark uh, pewter jewel of cup here. You can also use, if you have uh, a silver plated one, uh, this is the one that uh, the Kentucky Society gave for me. Uh, it has my name on it, you can, I don't know if you can see that. I was also, just to show you how seriously we take this stuff in Kentucky, as a high school senior, I was awarded a julep cup with my name engraved on it for getting a 4.0 all four years. I was 17 and I got a julep cup. We take it real seriously, guys. It is part of life. And I also have one at my mother's house with my name on it and a horse on the front that I got when I was a very small child. So let's get to it. We're gonna start with two and a half ounces of bourbon and we're gonna pop it into uh, the bottom part of our shaker here. We're just gonna give this a little bit of jostling just to make sure that the mint goes out of it, but we're not gonna shake it with ice. So I'm gonna pop in two and a half ounces of Maker's into my shaker tin. 
You don't have to shake it even. You can actually just do this in a mixing glass too or right in your cup. Um, I just prefer to get all the mint out before I, I put it in my cup just in case a little bit sneaks out. And you know, after quite a few uh, mint juleps, you're not gonna notice what's in your teeth. But then when you look at pictures the next day, you certainly will. Now, the Derby has been called the run for the roses because at the end of the race, the horse not only gets $3 million, well, I mean, the purse is shared. It's not for the horse, it's the owners, right? They not only get a $3 million purse, but they get this gorgeous blanket of red roses made by Kroger. Um, and so that is why you are running for the roses. They are running for that beautiful, gorgeous blanket of roses that they place over the horse. So we're gonna sweeten the deal with some simple syrup. I'm using rich simple syrup. This stuff looks dark because I used uh, this turbinado raw cane sugar. Um, and so I'm gonna be using half an ounce of rich simple syrup. Remember that's two to one parts sugar to water. So it's gonna be really sugary. Um, and the reason why I'm gonna do this is because the second most important part of the mint julep besides the mint is our ice, crushed ice. So that ice is gonna melt, and so we don't want it to water down our drink. We wanna make sure that it can meld nicely. That first sip might be a little strong, might be a little sweet, but trust me, it's gonna mellow as you drink them. So half an ounce of our rich, simple syrup goes right in here. Oh, you know, the Derby is just, it's one of those things that it, it's a state of being, if you will. It's not just an event. It's, it takes over the entire state. It takes over the mind and the life of every Kentuckian, regardless of where they are on that first Saturday in May. It started back in 1875. And like I said, it has not missed a beat. And so I'm really hoping that this year we don't miss it. Secretariat was the one who has done uh, the Derby in the least amount of time in just under two minutes. The race itself has been called the most exciting two minutes in sports or the fastest two minutes in sports because literally you're just, you're just waiting for it to happen and it happens like that. It does not feel like a normal two minutes. Now, there are also the fact that this is the first race of the Triple Crown and our last Triple Crown winner, um, American Pharaoh, we actually were watching something today. He's having a rad life at, at Ashford Stud. Apparently his stud fee is like $200,000, $250,000. And so that just means that he gets to have a good time all day long. Now that is what is cut out for a really amazing racehorse after they have run their career. So three-year-olds are what run the Kentucky Derby and few fillies um, have won. And you can actually, so with these commemorative derby glasses that come out every year, on the back of them, there is a list of every single winner. And there's a little key, there's a legend at the bottom that shows if they're a triple crown winner, it has a little crown next to it. And then there's a little star if they're a filly. Not many fillies have won, um, but the ladies are still making it happen. So now for my favorite part, fresh mint. It's just, it's so beautiful. So I say take the leaves of about five uh, pieces of mint. Now this is gonna depend on the size of mint you have. Some of your mint, if you pull it out of your yard, it's gonna be huge. So just make sure that you have um, enough mint so that, that it's not gonna overwhelm it, but that you're still gonna get that amazing fresh minty oil flavor. So we've got two, three, four, five. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So we're going to then pick off the leaves and pop them right in here. <laughs> I love mint juleps. Mint juleps sometimes get a bad name though because people think they're too sweet or they're too blah, blah, blah. They are the perfect outdoor drink. And, you know, I said, you know, thousands, tens of thousands are sold every single year. 
uh, at Churchill Downs in Louisville. Uh, but they also have special juleps that are a little bit more shy in production. And those are the Commonwealth Cup, the Royal Cup. They go for $1,000, $1,500, $2,500. And they all go to charities. Um, I know one year, uh, some of them went to Jennifer Lawrence's Arts Foundation, um, but then most of them go to uh, equine uh, foundations as well. And that comes with a beautiful gold-plated cup or silver-plated cup. Sometimes they even have uh, sugar that's brought in from, I think, what was it, Australia? And then they had mint brought in from somewhere else and then um, an exceptional bottle of Select Woodford Reserve. Now, the Derby is about two and a quarter miles, which is 10 furlongs. And that's why it lasts about two minutes because that's, that's how they, that's about how long it takes to run one of those. And so the rest of the day, what some people don't know is that the Derby is not the only race that's run that day. There are actually, it's a day full of races and the Derby is, you know, the last race of the day. And so that's why it actually happens around 545, six o'clock. So by the time you get to the Derby, um, yeah, you've already had about, I'm not gonna give a number, but a lot of these suckers. So I'm gonna take my muddler just because this is what I'm gonna use. You can use the back of a spoon. You can just, you know, shake it up. You can do whatever you'd like, but I'm just gonna use a muddler to gently express those minty oils into my shaker. And so that's just making sure that nice fresh mint oil is getting into the simple syrup and into that maker's mark so it's imbued with that nice minty flavor. You can certainly make a mint simple syrup. Pro tip, if you're making a lot of them, just use mint extract. I know it sounds gross, but it's actually really good. And especially if you're making them in mass, super easy and it smells really nice. So then I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna give it a quick, just, I'm just gonna give it a quick shake just to make sure it's nice. And this is a dry shake because I don't want this to get really watered down because remember that, that crushed ice is gonna melt and it's gonna be beautiful. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to strain this into my julep cup. Now, you can also double strain this if you like, but I didn't wanna get my double strainer dirty, my mesh strainer dirty, and you'll see why. I didn't wanna get it all full of bourbon. So then we are going to pack this sucker with crushed ice. And when I say pack, I mean to the top. Like if you think you haven't done enough, you haven't done enough. Now crushed ice, not everybody has the ice crusher on their fridge, and that's okay, because there's a couple of things that you can do um, you can get a, oh, I can't remember what that fancy bag is called. There's a fancy kind of like a, a bag that you can get. Uh, Derek's gonna kill me because I can't remember the name of this. Um, but you can get that bag and uh, you literally just fill it with ice and you whack it. Um, or you can use the Chevy Chase method, which is, you know, catch it in a coat and whack it with a hammer. You can literally just put it in a dish towel and whack it on a chair. You can use the bottom of a bottle, mash it up, Ice is ice, it's gonna crush for you. So, you know, get creative. Just be safe and don't break anything. All right, so we have our julep. Now, it's hard to get into that bourbon in there, right? So I'm gonna pop a straw in. Then I'm going to take a big, big bouquet of mint and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna whack it on my hand. Now, not only does that kind of get the water off that you've washed it with, and you should always wash it with cold water because that's gonna make sure the mint goes bright green and make sure it stays up. Now I'm gonna pop this and make sure you just kind of take some of the bottom pieces off. I'm gonna pop this in next to my straw. And then, ah, uh, we're gonna make it snow in Kentucky. Take your small strainer and take powdered sugar. And we are going to make it rain. Look at that, beautiful. And that, my friends, 
is a mint julep. So, here's to you all, and here's to my old Kentucky home. Oh, the sunshine bright. And this one goes out to a man we lost far too early. Cheers to you, Mr. John Prine. We miss you. Well, the corn